Hello, brothers and sisters. I miss all of you very much. I love you all very much as well. I had a really, really exciting vision a few weeks ago. I've been kind of holding on to it. I've been holding on to it because I wasn't sure if I should even share it or not because it's kind of good news, you know, and I'm really excited, personal revelation of, of what I'll be doing or where my particular spot, my little kingdom will be whenever Christ rules and reigns on the earth. And I've been really excited about it, but I've been kind of keeping it to myself besides letting just a few people, a few friends know about it. Um, but it's kind of hard to keep it back because I'm so excited, but I figured I would share it with you guys and just pray that that you would enjoy it with me and that to all those who hate personal revelation, I pray that that you wouldn't stomp on my pearls because these things are special to me. And the message is not about me. It's not about anybody else. But uh, ultimately, I only share my dreams and visions because it gives me the opportunity to call everyone to Christ, to call everyone to repentance, uh, to ask everybody to get baptized for the remission of sins and and you know just to be examples of christ just to follow the light um, that christ has given us to follow and you know so i use the personal revelation he has given me uh, for an in route to share the gospel and so i figured well if you're just giving me mostly revelation personal revelation lately i could keep it to myself and not make as many videos or i can kind of just share it if i have your permission lord and so i kind of feel like i can share this and I actually have a few questions too about what I saw and I'm trying to put it all together how that could work so I know that doesn't make sense to you now but I'm gonna kind of set it up to where I'm gonna share a few of the other dreams I had that lead into this experience this vision I had now when I'm sharing this with you guys I'm not sharing it with you guys out of pride or anything like that it just I have to explain to you what I'm thinking about in my head when I put the pieces of the puzzle together if that makes sense to you the Lord has been really trying to share with me something very, very special. It all started a while back, and I'll share a few dreams with you. One, I remember being in heaven. It was a vision. I was in heaven. I was sitting in a classroom. I believe this classroom was a classroom full of angels. It was a heavenly vision. We were all taking a test. We're taking a test to actually come to the earth. Now, I had, uh, I had actually took the test and I had scored the highest grade and I was chosen uh, out of this whole class to come to the earth to take a position on the earth. Now, I didn't know particularly what position it was in the vision, but the, the last test question that we had had to do with the blood. Now, I believe the blood has to do with becoming, uh, being a son of David, the blood of the, you know, the, of the lineage of the house of David. The reason I say that is, as soon as I answered this test question, and it was the answer was the blood, all of a sudden, we we're like in this huge classroom, a bunch of angels trying to come to the earth, and I look over, and all of a sudden, as I was chosen first in the class, there was this huge throne that just appeared in the classroom, like some of the chairs were moved, and there was this huge throne sitting there, and it had fish fish nets around it like in a castle you know like the bedroom might have like some big nets around it like you see in the movies and there were like these lights all over the place like strung around christmas lights and i was told to go and to have a seat on this chair right before that i was told it was in the blood and in this classroom there was a girl there and there was a another student who took second who was actually really really upset and i don't know if that was a good person who just got upset or if that was Lucifer before, you know, before the fall, I'm not sure, but I know that this person was very, very upset and I was to sit in this chair because of the blood, okay? And then I think to myself, because the Lord told me, he gave me a vision and he said, when I was praying about what tribe I belonged to, if I did belong to a tribe, and you see, I heard him audibly wide awake, he said, Jacob, thou son of David. And so I think to myself, the blood, he must be meaning the house of David, to be a son of David. Because of the blood, you know, that it's another reason why I will be doing that. Okay, so a little time goes by and I have another vision. I have a vision of the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit kind of being all in one person. We're sitting in a classroom, another classroom. And this classroom is filled. I'm sitting to the right of God and to the right of me is a classroom of students. Um, I don't know who the students are, but I know that they are special to the Lord. All of a sudden we walk out and there's an audience full of angels just surrounding, just like a choir of angels all in the audience. And I'm called onto a stage with the Godhead. 
And as I'm standing next to the Godhead, I can hear the thoughts of the angels. Like they're like, ooh, and all, like, ooh, ah, like, how can he stand up by God so close and he not burn up? So I guess in heaven, if they get too close to God, like they, they burn, you know what I mean? Like, I know that some of the angels have wings to keep the, the power and the heat of God off of the angels. So they just, just disintegrate, I guess. I don't know. So I heard them saying, well, how can he stand so close to God? And they're like, ooh, and on. And all of a sudden, God does something to her. I start to like have the Holy Spirit like become one with me. And as I feel this feeling, the Holy Spirit is so strong on me. I know that I'm becoming one with God. And they're ooing and aahing as if this was a special, a really special event that's going on. So now it takes me to my next vision. And I got, I think maybe just two more quick visions I'll share with you and then I can get to what I saw. In this vision, I was called up to heaven and I was floating in the air my eyes could see three suns like three lights in front of me i believe it was the fall of the sun and the holy spirit i saw beauty everywhere and i'm floating to in the sky and i could feel like god like a gravity is pulling me towards him to come see him and i just feel the holy spirit just rock me and that's what i was just i joke with you guys about it all the time that i felt like i had 10 shots of ecstasy or something you know what i mean just the ecstasy i felt the love and the joy and just oh i even i think i even made that noise oh you know like it was just like wow and all of a sudden, I heard the Lord say, In you I have found no guile. In the kingdom there will be no one higher. And then all of a sudden, he takes me into a kingdom. And I'm going in this kingdom, I'm going up. And then I get taken to a place where I see three white thrones. And I believe I might know what these three white th thrones are for now. So I see three white thrones. And they're beautiful and uh, I get taken up even higher in this particular kingdom and when I see these thrones I mean I'm seeing white marble floors you know and like everything's clean and beautiful I get taken up even higher in this kingdom that was supposed to be my kingdom that he was giving me and there was one gold throne and I quickly a little bit later came out of the vision I'm not sure I don't have my notes in front of me what all happened after that but pretty much was it I was told that and it about blew my mind you know I was so excited about it now this takes me to this final vision I want to tell you guys about to set this up. If you remember, I was going in a vision where I was going to all these different cities, townships, you know, all these different places. And every place I went, I would completely decimate fallen angels, uh, those who were breaking the law. Just I was like a, you know, like law enforcement of all these different towns, cities and all that. And as I go and I would fight against these fallen and I kind of take them out, uh, for some reason, when they, they would say to me, who are you? And I'd say, I'm the law. And so that kind of stuck with me. I started to say, I'm the law a few times. And, you know, I think the Lord had that happen because he was setting something else up that was about to take place. If you turn to Isaiah 2, 2 to 5, it reads, And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the tops of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore, O house of Jacob. Come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. And when I read this, I'm thinking about the law, then I'm thinking about the Lord calls me Jacob, now he changed my name. I think about the few times that I've had the angels talk to me audibly and they would say to me, let's go build this Jacob a house as if the angels were talking to the other angels. And then they said, the mist of the tents have fallen into Jacob's hands. And if that's not enough, the Lord brings to my remembrance all the things about the man-child stuff he's been showing me. Remember, I've been telling you guys that, uh, you know, and I'm not saying you have to agree with me on this, but as far as my belief on it, from what I believe the Lord is showing me, showing me is that the man-child is the replacement in the north for the fallen Lucifer. When he fell, he took one-third of the hosts of heaven with him, and I believe they all came from the north mostly, or, uh, not completely, mostly from the north. And so I believe that Uriel temporarily took the spot in the north. 
the throne in heaven faces the uh, the east, brothers and sisters. Now, the throne in Jesus faces the east, and to the right of the Lord, you have Michael at the bottom, would be south. You have Uriel north. You have Raphael behind the throne, and you, to the west, and you have Gabriel to the east. I really do believe that the Lord has been showing me that the man child will be the literal replacement of Lucifer in the north. Um, they're, they're trying to rebuild the kingdom, you know, even better than when it was before the fall. And if you turn to the scriptures uh, in Isaiah 41 to 25, I believe the Lord led me to a scripture to back up what I'm trying to say to you. It reads, I have raised up one from the north and he shall come from the rising of the sun shall he call upon my name and he shall come upon princes as upon mortar and as the potter treadeth clay so here we he's talking about someone being set up in the north being raised up i've had so many dreams now uh where i've been told that you're i was being raised up for something and i never knew what it was and at the very bottom as the potter treadeth, treadeth clay that is a man child reference so again, this scripture is in Isaiah 41, 25. It talks about one being raised up from the north and he's going to be as the, you know, as the potter treadeth clay. And that's a man child reference. And if you turn to Psalms 75, 6 through 7, it reads, For promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south, but God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. I believe that is it's saying here that promotion comes from the north because that is a spot that most of the angels fell in. That's where Lucifer fell. And as he puts down one, meaning Lucifer, he sets up another. And not just Lucifer, all the one third of the hosts of heaven that fell. The, all those positions, brothers and sisters, are being refilled. They definitely are being refilled. And so this takes me to my experience that I had. And it kind of goes along with Isaiah 2, 2-5 two that I'm going to be talking to you guys about. So all of a sudden, I'm laying in bed, and I get taken into a vision. And when I tell you this vision, brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm telling you 100% truth. I'm not um, adding to it or taking away from it. I'm going to tell you exactly what I heard and what I saw. I'm in a vision, boom, and I see something like a table, and I'm there with just a couple of people, and I know the Lord's there, and I don't think I see him at this time, but I see one person get called forward. He's told something, but I'm not allowed to hear it. Um, there's another person gets called up. He's told something, and I don't, I don't know what he was told, but I know what I was told. I get called up, and I've, I was told something that's just awesome. Okay, so I get called up, and all of a sudden, brothers and sisters, I see a map of the American continent. If you can imagine in the air, it's floating in the air. It's like, I don't know, like it's in the air. And I see the whole American continent lit up one color. Kind of like if you would highlight the American continent, like, you know, blue or green or whatever color you wanted to highlight it. It's in front of me. And I hear the Lord say, you will be king of America. And then boom, I'm out of it. And I get up and I'm like, what? Like, and it's such a strong vision. I knew it was from the Lord, but I knew, I just was like, whoa, like, okay, are you telling me like my, my role, my kingdom in when Jesus sets up, when Jesus is the king of kings and he rules over the earth, are you telling me what my kingdom will be? Brothers and sisters, I saw a map lit up of the American continent and I was told kind of like that I'd be the king of, a, of the, like that was my area whether it was the American continent. And then as I got, was told that, I started to think about that, that kingdom I was told when I saw, told about where I saw three white thrones and then I went up higher and saw a gold throne and it said, in the kingdom there'll be no one higher. Well, I thought about it, those three white thrones. I've been thinking, who are those for? What, are this, what is the purpose of this? And then I thought about it. Well, you have a South America, a Central America, and in North America, are those three white thrones the kings for kings and queens of the Central, uh, South and North America? You see what I'm saying? And it's more of a regional thing, just like Michael might be over Israel or Raphael, to say Raphael's over in America or something like that. I, mean, I don't know, but all I'm trying to make the point is like, it's kind of like an area. You see what I'm saying? I, I bet that 
I wouldn't even have to live there. It's still just kind of like an area that has been appointed to me. And so that was huge. And then I went back and everything started to make sense. And then again, I, we're going to go to this again, Isaiah 2, 2 to 5. It says, and it shall come to pass in the last days. Remember that they kept calling me the law, right? I have a couple of questions for you guys because I need your help. And it says, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the tops of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all the nations shall flow into it. And many shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob. God calls me Jacob and we will t and, we, and he will teach us in his ways. The Lord will and he, we will walk in his path. OK, this is the very important part. This is what I'm thinking right here. It says for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. OK, the word of the Lord is Jesus is the word of God. OK, Jesus is the word of God and he the word of the Lord. Jesus will be king of everything, uh, God, king of everything. And he, his word will come forth from Jerusalem, from Israel, right? You know, the old Israel. God has always told me that my place will be in new Israel. He corrected me one time. I thought it was old Israel, but he said, I heard an angel say new Israel. So here I am saying I'm the law and it's saying that the law will go forth out of Zion, but the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So this is my question. You know how it says in the Bible that a guy was set up his servant, David, um, as a prince, kind of like kind of Jesus, the king of everything, but he has a prince. This is what I'm thinking, brothers and sisters. Do you think, and if any of you ever have visions on it or any information you could share with me, please let me know. Is the American continent, will that be Zion? Will that be the, the new Israel? Some believe that whenever the, you know, the ancient Israelites uh, went north or went to different locations, that a lot of them came to America. And so when I read this, they were calling me the law and it says, out of Zion shall go forth the law. So, and I know God just told me that my territory would be America. So is America Zion? And what exactly is the law that'll go forth with the, you know, just kind of like God's law that comes forth. And it's kind of like the man child thing, right? It all makes sense. Now the man child thing, the law go forth. And just like that vision I just gave you guys where I was going from town to town, city to city. And I was just kind of like, like a potter, um, bus clay. I was making sure that God's commandments were obeyed. The law was going forth out of Zion to keep God's law kind of or else type of thing. You know what I mean? Like it just kind of all fits to me. And then the angels get this guy done telling me, you know, talk, the next verse is it says, and he shall judge among the nation and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into prong, pronging hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall any le learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come ye, let us walk in the light of the Lord. You know, and that's why I keep seeing all this man child stuff, brothers and sisters, is because the man child uh, is going to be somebody who rules with, an, you know, an iron scepter. It's like not playing any games, you know, and I keep on having all these visions and I'm being I was told, you know, the number 23 is has many different reasons. Some see it for good reasons. Some see it for bad. It could mean 23 chromosomes. It could mean 23 in a bad way. It could mean dates. It could. I personally, when I see the number 23, the Lord has told me is it represents the man child. And so and then my as soon as I had that vision of the man child thing with the number 23, I had my my sister call me up and say, Jason, the Lord gave me a vision last night and he gave a message to, for me to give to you. I said, what is the message? On the same night, I had got the vision of the fish with the man child coming out of the fish's mouth being born. She said, J and, I, and I knew that fish, I knew that boy was me coming out of there. She said, Jason, 23, that's my message I was supposed to give to you. And I knew that 23 because God had just got done telling me that 23 represented man child to me. And the Lord had given the same night all make sense to me brothers and sisters and i don't share this with you out of any other reason but to glorify god and just to be wowed at all the can you guys imagine the blessings that he has in store for all of us brothers and sisters this whole world will be set up with kings and queens over towns cities states governments governors you know territories uh you know 
There's going to be cities. There's going to be towns. There's going to be all these different places, brothers and sisters, where you will rule and reign with Christ. And it's going to be a really awesome thing. And this is my question that I'm thinking about right now. Is the American continent, is it Zion? It, will that be considered Zion? Because the, if the visions that I've seen, if, if I'm understanding them correctly, I really do believe that it is. You know, of course, you know, Zion could be the whole planet, but the way I'm seeing it, I believe that that Zion will be American continent. And the Lord says in his day that there will be no more oceans. So we see the ocean disappearing and we see land. Now, this is my second question I have for you all. This is something that I'm trying to, I've been praying about and I, I don't know yet. Where, when the new Jerusalem comes down, where will the new Jerusalem settle at? Will it be a, a cube? Will it be a pyramid? Do you believe it sets down in Israel? Do you believe that it can set down on the American continent, the new Jerusalem and the new Israel? Or do you believe maybe it's kind of like when the ocean leaves, maybe it sets down in between Zion and J Jerusalem. You see what I'm saying? Maybe it sets down because the ocean's going to com be completely gone. The mountains will be made low. The low places will raise up. There will be no more ocean. There will be plenty of water for everybody, but they will have a lot more space on uh, on, on the land uh, in the earth to you know to house a lot more people because we're all will be living to a, a lot greater age this brings me to another question the lord keeps showing me he keeps showing me too because i'm like thinking to myself well lord does that mean i have to live in uh, america because i you know i really didn't plan on living in america i've been seeing that I, you've been showing me that i'm going to eden like, I know that might be my territory, but as far as living, he's been showing me that I go with my companion to, to Eden, the Garden of Eden. He didn't say the garden, but he hints to the Garden of Eden all the time. And when he tells me where I'm going, he tells me I'm going to Eden. So where's Eden? Where do you guys think Eden is? You know, we know that through the New Testament that the paradise is in the third heaven. There's more than one heaven. If you haven't known that, brothers and sisters, there's many different heavens. Um, there's actually seven or more levels of heaven and there could be a paradise in all of them as far as we know But Paul talks about I believe in uh, I don't know if it's Corinthians or somewhere else But he talks about the paradise being in the third heaven But where is the Garden of Eden because I've been hearing that I'm going there The Lord's been telling me that for a long time. I'm going there with my companion to the Garden of Eden So where is this? Maybe I had a dream one time when my companion comes in and she goes I'm, I can't wait to take you to Olive Garden And I knew what she was saying because my ex would never go with me to Olive Garden But I had a vision of being with a companion and she's when I was walking away She said I can't wait to go with you to the Olive Garden. I knew she meant the Garden of Eden So where do you think brothers and sisters? Where do you think the God the are um? The Garden of Eden is 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 there is there um, a hollow earth you know is it somewhere in hollow earth North uh, Antarctica North Pole is there is it on a different heaven is it will it be here again and just do you think God destroyed it and will build it back up or did God keep it safe this whole time because if you believe that God kept it this whole time it can't be on this earth or at least not on the outer surface because it's not here we can't see it you know, it would have been destroyed whenever the ocean came up over this, uh, you know, that like, kind of like the Sumerian location right there or the four rivers, they say it is. Well, if it's not there now. So where is it? Just something that's been on my mind a lot lately because I know I'm headed there and I just want to know where this place is. And I haven't got any further revelation on it for a little fun side note. All kind of signs have been going up in my neighborhood. You know how when people run for office. They put these little signs up like vote for me type things. Well, there's a man, his, his last name is Riser, R-I-S-E-R, who is running for a treasurer and he has signs up all over the place. And I'm like, are you joking me? Really like, you know, like risen, you know, like rapture, like, you know, resurrection. We have Riser running for treasurer, you know, all in my neighborhood. I'm like, oh my goodness, you really cannot make this stuff up. I don't want this to get too long, so I'm going to share two more experiences with you. Uh, one of the ones I'm going to share with you is I'm sharing it because I still don't have to figure out what exactly it means. And so I kind of want to share that on this video because um, I've shared some things with you guys today that I kind of would love your help on kind of putting some of the pieces together uh, with me, you know. One was really strange. I kind of wrote it off as a bad dream. And, but then I talked to my friend about it, and he's like, why would you? It kind of makes perfect sense. I was like, all right, well, you know, because I was like, no, I can't think that's good because I know it might look prideful, but, 
you know so it's like well i'll share it to see what people say but um i was just in a dream and my name was emmanuel eshuva and we all know what that means but eshuva i looked it up it means a healing spirit and i was like oh at first i was like i gotta be bad but then i thought about it well my friend said well jason Raphael is a healing spirit i was like well that does make sense doesn't it you know so i didn't put much thought into that i kind of just wrote it down i'm just sharing it but this last dream i want to share with you guys it was kind of strange it was about me and my mom right my mom's name is angela so sometimes you know she'll go and her name will represent um angel or you know she'll represent other things sometimes but mostly angela for angel she was coming to pick me up in her truck um it was a special day for me it was like a you know it was kind of like not a birthday you know but it was kind of a special day planned out for me and there was this parade that was going on and she wanted to get a good spot at the park where the parade would be going through before the parade was going through i had to go to this classroom and this classroom was full of students and they were giving out two book deals to the uh, to whoever won in this class in the vision i knew that whoever won each of these book deals could write about whatever they wanted to write about you know it could be about you know you can make up a story or it could be about your life and history uh, you know it wasn't specific of what i had you know to write about if you actually want it so here they go they're giving out two book deals and they call out the winner of the first book deal and they call my name i had one and I was like, whoa, I want a book deal, you know, in the vision. I'm not quite sure what's going on, but I was still pretty excited that I won the book deal. I could see around the classroom and everybody also was anticipating who would win the, the second book deal. And I see in the front, there's kind of like this really smart scientific type guy. He really wanted this book deal. This class was full of people. And they call out the winner of the second book deal and they called my name again for the second book deal. And I'm like, what? I won two book deals? And then all of a sudden, the guy in the front, like scientific guy, he was kind of like, like a hateful type person, you know? And he goes, what? He won both of them? He got so mad, he stormed out of this, this classroom. All of a sudden, my mom comes in and she's like, you won, you won, you won two book deals. And I was like, oh, mom, I'll catch you outside. You know, like I was like a kid, I was embarrassed from my mom. I heard my mom is in the classroom, you know? And I'm like, yeah, mom, cool, mom. I'll see you, I'll see you at the parade. Catch you later, you know, like. You know, that's my mom. You know, what kid in school, you know, wants to kind of be hanging out with your mom in the classroom? So I was like, all right, mom, cool. I'll catch you later. I'll see you at the parade. And, you know, so she was all happy. And she, you know, so she goes out and goes back to the parade. Then the weird, this is the weird part of this, this dream. It ends really weird. All of a sudden, I go kind of into rest. I am in a classroom still, the same classroom. That all of a sudden, I'm, I kind of lean to my left and I have a pillow on the desk to my left there's a person there i have my head laid out on their pillow on their desk kind of with my head on a pillow we're kicking back relaxing and to the desk to my right there was a girl in the desk to my right and i kind of pick my feet up kind of cock it at an angle to the right where i'm kind of like laying sideways with my head up on the left desk person's desk and my feet up on the person to the right uh his desk you know kind of like have my feet up on her thing and I noticed that I didn't have any shoes on. I kind of felt really comfortable like if I was resting in this classroom. All of a sudden, the girl to my right, she takes her fingers and she starts poking at my heel. Now, we all know that it's symbolic that the seed of Christ, the seed of the woman will, will you know, crush the head of the serpent. Now, I've done had dreams before to where I had uh, got raptured up and I jumped on top of a mountain and there was a bed laying there to rest and I get on this bed to rest and they gave me a white coat the angel gave me a white coat and there was my companion came and she got by my feet by my right heel and she got some some uh, thread like some sewing thread and she started to, to sew my right heel as if I had bruised it or cut it you know or hurt my heel uh, helping crush the head of the serpent you see what I'm saying so in this classroom she was messing with my heel this girl that was in this right desk and that was it that pretty much ended so yeah, I, this video I know is kind of random, guys. It's just some of the things that are on my mind, kind of, that I just want to share with you guys. Can you know see what you can add to it? Um, you know, that vision I had was so amazing, brothers and sisters. And I kind of, after that took place, the enemy came after me so hard. So it's been like really the the spiritual warfare has been through the roof. And I've been watching you guys' videos and. 
And so I know that you guys are going through it too. And I have actually... Okay, if you guys have read the book of Tobit, you know that that story is in some of the Bibles, like it's, it's canonized, not in the Bible that most of us read, but it's in like the Ethiopian Bible, it's in the Bible that the Catholics use, and you know, it's in some of the older Bibles. The story is called the Book of Tobit, in which God sends the the angel Raphael to do a few things. He goes, the, the older man, Tobit, is blind. He sends Raphael to heal his eyes, but also to accompany his, his, only, his only son, to get some money that is owed because he thought he was going to die. So Raphael goes and he catches a fish and he teaches the young man how to help heal his father. And he also takes uh, this young boy, this young Tobias, he takes him to the house of a young girl named Sarah who was kin to the family. And she had been married so many times, but every time she would get married, uh, the demon, uh, one of the main demons, Asmodeus, was there and he would actually kill the husband of this young girl every time she'd get married i don't remember how many times she was married but it was a bunch you know and so the the father did you know he's there with this saying you have to marry this girl and he's like are you kidding me like everybody that's married this girl's die you know she wasn't able to finalize the marriages like to even have you know to to have sex and to finalize the marriage because they kept dying before it happened. So the Lord sends Raphael there and at, the, at this point nobody knows he's Raphael. And so he goes there and he goes and takes out Asmodeus and, and just takes him off somewhere and gets rid of him out of his family's life. And at the very end of, end of this story he reveals to the family that he was Raphael and he kind of talks to them about praising God and that's something I do and you know I've done in so many dreams I share with you guys where I saw myself saying to all, all the people on the earth praise God praise God well he pretty much does that same thing in this story he gets rid of this 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 fallen entity uh, Asmodeus and you know believe it or not the only reason I'm bringing this up because I want you guys to please pray for me for extra help because that is the same exact entity that uh, attacked me yesterday if you all could please keep me in your prayers and, and pray that the Lord sends me extra help um, to remove those who are trying to stop the revelation that I'm getting to get to you guys I've noticed that there are a lot of the fallen angels brothers and sisters trying to stop me from receiving information or you know or whatever the Lord wants me to share with you they're really trying extra hard to stop that lately and I really need you all to please uh, keep me in your prayers and also brothers and sisters I'd really appreciate it if you would pray and ask the Lord to help me to, to sustain me financially if it wouldn't have been for the help of a close friend I would have been homeless the last three or four months not having money for my rent for internet for food to eat or anything if it wouldn't have been for a friend that helped me and I keep praying for a complete healing if for those of you who don't know um, the enemy has attacked me with with many many really serious health problems I'm actually disabled right now and the government uh, without any really having any reason to took away my disability and I wasn't on disability just because I was just trying to get money I was actually on it because I actually am disabled um, I'm always in extreme pain and I have to take medicine for it or I'm kind of hospitalized. So please keep me in your prayers and I pray for a healing and I pray for it for a long time now and I kind of get the feeling that that my healing will come when we get our new bodies here pretty soon, you know, and, and I keep the faith and I know that the Lord will take care of me and he'll lead me through these tough times as well as a lot of you who are going through a lot of the same things that I am. I love you all so very much, brothers and sisters, and... You know, I wait for the occasion to where we all can embrace and hug and meet up in heaven and go visit each other, you know, go have cookouts at each other's houses and or mansions or and or castles or whatever it is the Lord has given you. Um, it's going to be such a, a, a great time to have family, you know, in heaven, brothers and sisters, somebody you barely know is going to love you more than a parent would in this particular life. Can you imagine that kind of love to where your neighbor will love you more than your parent would in this life? It's going to be the love like we've never experienced. And I want all of you to make it, brothers and sisters, but you must, you must repent of your sins. Please repent, repent, repent. If you are not repenting, brothers and sisters, you're not going to be forgiven. You actually got to confess your sins before God. You got to tell him you're sorry. You got to reach out to him and, and tell him you're sorry and tell him you're going to change and turn from those things.
Jesus in John 1 9 says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness in Luke 13 3 to 5 we read I tell you nay but except ye repent ye shall all likewise perish or those 18 upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all the men that dwell in Jerusalem? I tell ye nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. We must all repent, brothers and sisters. Acts 3.19, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So brothers and sisters, rem remember to repent um, if you're not baptized, please get baptized by full submersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You don't have to join somebody's church uh, or join a religion, uh, find a worthy brother, a born-again brother in the gospel, and just ask him to baptize you. As I turn to Peter, 1 Peter 3, verse 21, I read, The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not to the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So here we got Jesus Christ, a man who knew no sin, but had John the Baptist baptize him because he knew that he had to fulfill all righteousness, all the things that the Father had wanted him to do. So us being sinners, how much more of a need do we have being filthy and not being sinless? How much more of a need do we have to be baptized to follow his perfect example? Brothers and sisters, we must follow Jesus' commandment. He said, come, follow me. And I know that I will follow him wherever it is he asked me to follow him. And I love you so much, brothers and sisters. And I say these things humbly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Repentance because you understand that you are a sinner, a wretched one in both nature and deed. And that you deserve that which a holy and righteous God must give to those who sin and that is his wrath and eternal punishment that's repentance repentance is recognizing that repentance is self abhorrency as the confession says repentance is being so sick of yourself that you can't stand yourself and you want to get away from yourself because you recognize that everything in you is filthy and wretched and does not deserve to be in the presence of a holy God and you turn from that and cry out to the only one who can make you any different. That's repentance. Repentance and faith. Faith in what? Faith in the Jesus of the scriptures. Faith in the God-man. Faith in the one who was born of a virgin. Faith in the one who performed miracles. Faith in the one who died on a cross. Faith in the one who rose again on the third day. Faith in the one who's coming again to judge the living and the dead. Faith in the only one who's an answer to the sin problem from which you are in repentance. Faith in that one. Faith in him alone. In his completed work. Not his work and, but his work alone. That's faith. That's faith. Not just the name, but the person and work of Jesus Christ. When you grasp repentance like that, and when you grasp faith like that, then you understand the narrow road, the narrow gate, the hard road. Only then. If you think it's easy, and that you can continue to be who you are, and that somehow, because you say a few words, that makes you okay with God, if you think that because you are comparatively less wicked than the people around you and that somehow that means you're worthy of heaven, if you think that because somehow you have not been as awful and as wicked as the Hitlers of the world and the Mansons of the world and that somehow that means that God's going to grade on a curve, then you have not found the narrow gate. Repent. Place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Cry out to Him that He might save you and forgive you of your sins. Enter the narrow gate. Walk the hard road. The one with few companions. Because then and only then will you find life. You've 
come in the final days. Oh, when God has held you in reserve for 6,000 years, you have been renewed. To meet your God, youth of the noble birth, You're part of the Lord's royal army. The army. There are things for each of you to do that no one else can do. You are preserved as well as you are special. You, 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 you. Me, 